Hi, I'm Annie Fitzsimmons. I'm your Washington Realtors Legal Hotline lawyer. And today's video is another in our series on professionalism, describing the broker who wants to make real estate a career and not just a job. And I'm joined again today by my friend, Camden Schutte. Yeah. Thanks for having me. I'm Camden Schutte, designated broker with 360 Property Management and Cobble Maker 360 team uh, up on Whidbey Island. And as Camden and I were starting or discussing this particular um, video, and I'll describe it to you in a minute, Camden was telling me about a phenomenon that they are experiencing within this industry. And and on Whidbey Island, you have a, a naval base, yep. right? Yeah, on North Whidbey Island, we have NAS Whidbey Island, so a naval base. Go ahead and tell, tell them what you were telling me. Yeah, so obviously we're in a very competitive market seeing a lot of cash offers, conventional financing. We still see a lot of VA financing because the veterans and the active members are able to take care, take advantage of their VA financing opportunity. What is odd that we're seeing is that if you have a conventional and a VA uh, lo loan and multiple offers, that the VA is being viewed as a subpar offer um, to the point sometimes where it's, we, we're not even gonna accept a VA. And to what do you credit that? Well, usually, I mean, a VA, VA loan is typically a zero down option for a borrower. And so what, what we hear a lot is, oh, VA buyers don't have any cash. They can't make up the difference if an appraisal comes in low uh, and, and stuff like that. They might not be as qualified of a buyer. And you're saying that's not the case? That is not the case. Just because someone wants to take advantage of a financing option that's available to them doesn't mean that they're a less qualified buyer. It just means they're taking advantage of an opportunity that's there for them. And just because somebody's a VA buyer doesn't mean that they don't have additional cash? Exactly. Okay. So when Camden was telling me this story, the the question that came to my mind is, and you can, you can give the answer here in a minute, but the question that came to my mind was, so Camden, if a VA buyer is making an offer and the VA buyer has this pocket full of cash that they could bring to the closing table if they need to, but the listing broker and the seller are automatically disqualifying the buyer, assuming that that buyer has no money. Whose mistake is that? And the answer was? The buyer's broker. It's buyer's broker's responsibility to advocate for their client and to explain everything about the client and the opportunity to the listing broker. I mean, I remember, I remember hearing stories about a time where buyer brokers would actually present the offer <laughs> to the seller and the listing agent. I lived that time. And, and now we might receive an offer and never even get a phone call that it's coming or even a text message. So there's no advocacy happening yeah. to explain the situation of the buyer. Shame on the buyer broker who sends over an, e an email with an offer attached and never so much as a phone call or even a text message to say I've sent it did you get it yep. right so Camden let's look at this from both the buyer brokers and the listing brokers perspective then when it when a transaction is handled properly what is the conversation that you expect to be happening behind the scenes between the listing broker and buyer brokers before the offer review period oh. I'm far, sorry before the offer review absolutely I mean well, obviously, buyer brokers in this market, you want to know what that seller needs. I mean, there's a there's a whole video series on on winning in this market, uh, but there needs to be communication. And, and back in talking about one of the other videos that we did, we talked about those relationships. You got to build those relationships so that you can advocate for and fight for your client even before the offer is submitted, before the offer is reviewed, so that the listing broker has that information to go to their seller with. Exactly. So listing brokers need to, when, when you have buyer brokers, so actually let's play this out here. So I'm the listing broker. I'm, I've told people that my seller is going to review offers on Monday night. I've had eight different buyer brokers come through the house in the last 48 hours. Should I be engaging in conversation with those buyer brokers now? Absolutely. I mean, obviously there's the disappointment we, we have of offers just being sent and never communicated from the buyer's broker. As a listing broker, you have a responsibility to find out about those buyers because you're helping your seller make a decision on who's the most qualified based off the terms that are important <clears throat> to your seller. 
So even if you get an offer from a buyer's broker, pick up the phone and call them. Find out about that buyer so you can help your seller make the best decision for them. Do you want to talk to the buyer's lender before the Absol offer presented, is Absolutely. presented? Absolutely. And correct me if I'm wrong, but we have permission to do that. Now, as soon as we get an offer with the 22A, the buyer is given permission to contact their lender. Or you can certainly get it, yeah. right? Who, who is the buyer's lender? Are they underwriting pre-approved? Are they pre-qualified? What's the status? Can Absolutely. I talk to the lender? Right? Absolutely. And if a buyer or buyer broker gives you pushback as a listing broker against talking to their lender, what impact does that have? It sure makes you question it. Uh, it makes you wonder why. What are you trying to hide? <clears throat> and again, if buyers are wanting to win in such a crazy market, the more that they allow that listing broker or seller to do research before mutual, uh, it can play, play a, a big role in it. Because it's not just about the price always yeah. for the seller. Yeah. So Camden, role play a little bit for us here and, and tell us what, what you as the buyer broker, how, do you ad, how would you advocate for that VA buyer who's making the offer to utilize their VA benefit, yep. but they've got extra cash, they're, they're bidding up the price over the list price, right? Yep. To be competitive, probably they are. How do you, what, what, is your, what is your conversation with that listing broker sound like before you present that offer? Well, I mean, and I appreciate you said before you present the offer, not after you send it. But having the conversation about here's the status of my client, here's where we're at. Even using, I mean, we see it a lot now, the 22 AD. Um, and I think you probably get some questions about the mandatory clause and the AD. Um, but even using something like that to be able to communicate, here's what we have and are able to do. And then again, obviously, the listing agent is going to be asking for proof of those funds. Um, but have that conversation. Call the listing broker. Here's where my client's at. This is what, what they can do. Here's why they're using a VA loan instead of a conventional or paying cash. Um, even though interest rates are going up, it makes sense for a lot of people to finance instead of using their cash to buy a home, yeah. even outside of VA. Yeah. I'm going to throw one more topic at you we haven't talked about yet. Sure. This was a hotline question I got the other day, and it, it, this may be commonplace for you. It was new to me. But the, it was a listing broker who said that he had received, I think he said eight offers, mm -hmm. and one of them really stuck out as an exceptional offer, and his, and his seller was inclined to accept it. But the listing broker said, accept that. Before I presented the offers, I went through and looked at the key box uh, logins mm -hmm. to find which brokers had actually viewed the home, and this one buyer, his buyer broker had not ever accessed the key box, had That's never, and so the question then, so then the listing broker said, then I had to have a, a conversation with him, not just about who's your buyer and how well qualified are they, but, not who's your buyer, but how well qualified is your buyer, and has your buyer actually seen the home, yeah. right? And in this particular instance, what the buyer broker told the <laughs> listing broker is, no, he hasn't seen the home, but he's just trying to line up some properties, yeah. So that when he's here later, he can go see all of the properties and then he knows he, he can just pull the trigger on the one that he wants. That was stunning to me. Yeah, no kidding. At least the broker was honest about <clears throat> that. I mean, in a lot of situations, we might not see that. Um, I haven't heard of that specific example, but I have heard of brokers um, who are more concerned with an offer that hasn't viewed the property sight unseen than someone, and, and sellers for that matter, than someone who might be a little lower on price, but has viewed the property and maybe has even already uh, signed off on the Form 17 because there's less concern about that transaction flipping. Right. Um, right. So I've, I've definitely heard of that, not that particular situation, but similar situations. Yeah, so listing brokers, you need to be, be preparing for the offer presentation not only by be acquainting yourself with the range of buyers out there and their financial qualifications, but also whether they've actually viewed the property or not. Absolutely. Or, and, and it's a lot of buyers, I think, in today's world are viewing properties with the, their broker's assistance through a FaceTime or yep. something like that. At least the buyer is exposed to the property. That's different than a buyer not ever even seeing the Just property Just looking at, at pictures or a 3D tour or something right. like that. Absolutely. Right. right. And, you know, that scenario you said kind of goes back to a, another conversation we've had about being truthful and and 
it's kind of interesting. Is that buyer writing multiple offers to secure properties to look at and then going to back out of them? Who knows? But that's another whole topic of itself. But that's a concern that would come up as well. Let's pick that up in a different video. Let's do it. I think we should cover that. Give that vid. Give that topic its own video. Um, okay. So summarizing this one, broker, whether you represent the buyer or the seller, advocate for your client. Advocate for a successful outcome. Buyer brokers, you advocate for your client by presenting your buyer and their offer to the seller, even if that's a presentation through the listing broker. Use your phone, use a face-to-face -face meeting, get in front of the offer presentation so that the listing broker knows the quality of your buyer's offer and their financial capacity before they present it to the seller. Yep. Is that fair? Absolutely. And you made a point earlier, you know, all this conversation makes me think of love letters, which we absolutely hate. But you made a comment earlier about your buyer's qualification, not who your buyer is, right. so that the decision can be made on terms and qualification. Right. I, I, I made a misstatement actually by saying who is the buyer and what is their financial qualification. Really, that's one category, right? Who right. is the buyer through their fa fa financial Absolutely. qualification and the terms of their offer. And then from the listing broker side, listing brokers, if you're getting an off, let's say you've gotten five offers and you've only heard from two of the buyer brokers, you need to pick up the phone and have that conversation with those buyer brokers because it may be that the least vocal buyer broker has the most qualified buyer. Absolutely. And and you won't be able to advocate to your seller about the um, the quality of that buyer and that offer if you haven't had that conversation with the buyer broker. And shame on that buyer broker for not doing their job. But that means that listing broker, you then have to do their job and your job so that you can educate your client. That's right, absolutely. If you have questions on this topic or any other, send an email to me, legalhotline at warealtor.org. Thank you for being a Washington Realtors member.